Hey guys, my name is Darren Sides and I'm an associate pastor here at Southside Baptist Church. I wanna welcome you to Southside and our digital church campus today. And thank you for being uh, here with us today. We are so grateful that God has brought you to us and we feel God has something very specific he wants to say to you, no matter where you are right now. Would you take a minute and share this stream on Facebook? We'd also love for you to do a couple of other things. Number one, connect with us on the chat and tell us where you're watching from. You can also text CONNECT to 904-441-8650. You'll receive a form in return that we would love for you to fill out so we know um, who you are and, and that you're joining us today. Number two, share any notes or highlights that God impresses on your heart. Number three, at the end of the service, let us know if there is any next steps that we can do to help you walk with God. We are excited about what God has to say through Pastor Gary and stay tuned right now for this week's Southside in 60. Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Casey, and this is Southside in 60. We are so excited about the start of our regional groups. Gathering people who live in the same area of town who may have never met is a big win. When winning is involved, that makes me think of competition. We are collecting school supplies for our friends at Spring Park Elementary, and the losing regional team captain gets a pie in the face. And that sounds like a win-win to me. You can drop off your supplies in your meeting room or in the church office during the week. Basketball camp starts tomorrow for girls who have completed third through sixth grade. Sorry, boys. We've been practicing and can't wait to learn new skills. Check out the event at ssbc.org to register. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. I learned that in Awana. Speaking of Awana, it starts on September 9th. Register today by heading over to the event page at ssbc.org. And that's Southside in 60. Bye. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Boy, we are looking forward to some time of worship. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, just act like we're all together, we're all in one place. We're all gonna stand up, we're gonna have a great time, we're gonna sing together. As a matter of fact, let's let's just sing loud. A lot easier to worship when you're singing loud. You know what I'm saying? Let's try that. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating. Spirit conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection. That Judge and 
Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for for new beginnings. Thank you for changes. Thank you for things that force us out of our normal, regular routine and our ruts. That's when the good work happens. Father, thank you for using this time in our lives. Thank you for not abandoning us. When we think everything else is abandoned, you're there. We thank you so much for that. Lord, we pray you'll be with us right now. Pray you'll be with us wherever we are. You'll surround us with your love. Surround us with your forgiveness. Lord, surround us with you. That makes all the difference. Thank you for being here with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. In Christ alone my hope is found This cornerstone, this solid ground, far through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my
my dad taught me about Jesus from the day I was born. I don't remember a day I didn't know about Jesus and about the Lord and about God. It was just part of my life. My dad was a Methodist minister. Uh, he actually was ordained when he was 17 years old. And uh, so he preached for about 40 years. My great grandfather was a Methodist minister. So I come from a line of ministers. And uh, my dad, when I was a boy, baptized me as a baby. I went to church every Sunday, sat on the front row with my family and listened to my dad preach. I actually thought about becoming a Methodist minister, a United Methodist minister. And when I was a senior in college, decided I was gonna to go to seminary. I went for a semester and dropped out and decided that I was gonna become a business person. And so I became a stockbroker. I continued to go to church, but um, I think in many ways I fell away from my, uh, my close relationship with God. It was something that I did occasionally on Sundays. When I was in my late 20s, I went back and went to law school. Came out of law school um, and was miserable, absolutely miserable. But when I was in law school, I met some people who uh, through uh, some work I was doing that were therapists, they were counselors. And I really was intrigued by what they were doing and felt like, I think I'd like to do that. I went back to school uh, to become a therapist. And so for about the last 18 years, that's what I've done. I was married for 25 years, I have three children, three boys. And after 25 years, I uh, went through a very painful time in my life where the marriage ended the divorce. And during that time, I went through a very painful time physically. I had uh, six back surgeries in four months and everything was going wrong, um, just fell apart. Uh, I was in, actually unable to walk for a period of time. I'd gone from being a very active person, loved to play golf, to somebody who could barely manage to, to walk. And um, it was during that time that um, I really reached a point in my life um, where uh, I reached out to Pastor Gary, who I'd known for 10 years. Actually, he reached out to me on a day when I really needed somebody. That started a journey for me that has continued for the last year of really coming back um, and finding God in a new way. I mean, there were times where I really wondered uh, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to make it through this emotionally and physically? Um, physically was enough, you know, but emotionally on top of that, it just seemed impossible. It seemed like there wasn't an answer. I had some powerful experiences in the hospital. Um, I was, had undergone five of my surgeries and was about to undergo a sixth. I was so anxious and so nervous and so um, distraught. And they said, I can't remember her name. I wish I could remember it, but they said, go get Miss So-and-so, go get Miss So-and-so. And they brought her to me and she was a nurse's aide. And she prayed with me she prayed with me at my bedside before I went into surgery. And I'll never forget that moment because her prayer, I just felt the presence of God and the Holy Spirit in my life at that moment in such a powerful way. She was like an angel. It was just a very powerful time in my life of pain, but also uh, of sort of renewal, of the, a deeper renewal of God's presence in my life. In my entire life, I had never been alone on Christmas Eve, ever. And I had never sat alone in a church service on Christmas Eve. And I was sitting in the church uh, and we were singing Silent Night. And I wasn't weeping openly or anything, but I found that there were tears coming down my face. And I realized uh, I felt a lot of loneliness. Well, I'll never forget that as long as I live, I was sitting right there. And I just suddenly felt from behind me this hand on my shoulder. 
you know, and it was someone, a stranger, that uh, she couldn't even see my face, but somehow she knew. And uh, that moment, I felt like it was God reaching out and touching me, you know, that I wasn't alone. Every time I would go through a hard time in life, uh, I found myself being drawn back to God and back to church, which in a way is, uh, doesn't really feel right to me because it feels like I'm only turning to God when I need Him. But there's never been a time in my life when I didn't feel um, that God was present with me. Um, and when I, especially when I look back in retrospect, I can see it more clearly. Even the times when I, when I was probably farthest away, um, he was obviously still there. Being baptized as a baby was very special for me, um, especially by my father. Um, but as an adult, it's really important for me to be able to say publicly and to be able to acknowledge um, to God that I believe and that I believe in his salvation and Jesus and what Jesus has done for me in a way that as a man, as a grown man, I can do that. I feel like it's almost like it's uh, like my baptism as a baby was a small spring and now it's sort of like a fountain, you know, and it's sprung up and coming up. So it's almost like to me, it's a continuation of what started when I was a baby. Um, and I'm looking forward to it on Sunday because I feel like when I come up out of the water, I'm gonna feel like it's the completion of something that started when my dad baptized me as a baby. Hello, my name is Delaney Friday, and I came to profess my faith one year when I was in VBS, and they asked if anyone wanted to say the prayer to take the next step forward in their relationship with Jesus, and I had decided that I was ready for that. The person who was most influential in my journey was probably my mom, because I grew up my whole life in the church, and she helped make sure that I wasn't just believing it because I had grown up knowing it. Baptism to me is when you've started a relationship with Jesus and you want to repent from your old sins and start a new life with Him. My name is Delaney and I am Southside. Hi, I'm Jason Sanderson. So what brought me to Southside was actually Cheryl Barker, my mother-in-law, and my wife, Jennifer Sanderson. I would say the biggest thing for me and my faith journey was the Starting Point group. I really enjoyed that. It was a place where I could kind of ask questions that I've thought about that weren't always uh, acceptable in most other places. And it was just interesting to me to be able to air that out and see how, uh, see how things went. And from there, I just kind of started reading in the Bible, went through the Gospels, and it, it really resonated with me. And so uh, ever since then, I've just been kind of on a journey. I do, I do believe in Jesus, and that's why I'm here. I was actually raised in faith. My grandmother was a member of this church and I actually went to church every Sunday with her um, here. It was the foundation that I needed. So that's where I got my basic understanding of God and Jesus and the fact that Jesus died on the cross for us. So growing up, I never doubted what I had been taught as a child. But you know, as, as we get busy in life, we tend to take what's important and move it to second place. Life was just on the go. Now, when I did have children, I did take them to church because I wanted them to have the same foundation that I did. I was very active in the church, still believed, but was still real busy. So I didn't take the opportunity in that church to build a more foundational relationship with God and Jesus. And as time went on, I got where I, you know, didn't go to church, didn't pray, didn't read the Bible. I went through the passing of my mother. Then I lost my father-in-law. Then we lost my dad. 
and then we lost my mother-in-law. And I was one of two people who were like 24 seven caregivers to them. So it wasn't that you dashed in and said, hey mom, how you doing and that kind of thing. But I was with them day in, day out. I was already kind of in a, uh, not a dark place, but an unhappy place because I was grieving very much for the loss of all four individuals. I loved them all. One day I realized that I had developed breast cancer. So the realization of that led me to a place I had never been before, and that was despair. I had been unhappy. I had been grief-stricken many times. I had been despondent but I had never known what true despair was like. And with that diagnosis, I really hit bottom emotionally. I wanted to reach out to God, but I felt um, really hypocritical because I had not reached out to him in over 10 years for anything. And I thought, well, that's great. And here you're supposed to be a faithful servant. And when it's time, when you need to call on him, you know, you're just supposed to fall down and say, dear Lord, save me, give me a miracle. And that just, like I said, it felt hypocritical. I said, um, I need to figure out how, how to get to God. And so Pastor Weber was very kind in um, giving me some materials to read. He prayed with me. He gave me a book about the prodigal son, which I learned a lot just reading that story. But the, the mere fact that it's not the 99 who are saved, but it's the one that the shepherd goes after. Through that, I was able to start praying, but really starting to get back in touch with the ability to turn my problems over to God and not trying to solve everything myself. I'm 68 years old. And I've never been what I consider to be properly baptized, which is in the Baptist faith through immersion. I've always had um, the belief that Jesus died on the cross for us and rose. And the Bible tells you that only through Jesus can you get to heaven. That is your salvation, is your belief in Jesus Christ. Pastor Weber asked me, why do you want to get baptized if you've always believed? Because um, do you see that as the act of salvation? I told Pastor Weber that the reason I wanted to have the immersion was that it was like taking the final step. If you're going to take the journey, take it all the way to the end. Just, just take it all the way to the end. You need to do that in order to get to the peace that will ultimately benefit you. And God does that out of His love for you. Dear Lord, I come to you with my final step to give you my full commitment to you and to Jesus Christ as I'm lowered, wash away my sins and my sadness and my grief. And as I'm lifted up, help me set to new and begin anew in my journey as I prepare to see you. Amen. Well, Camille, 
because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your faith in Him, it is my privilege to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in death, raised to walk in a new life. Oh, I feel better already.
Thank you guys for joining in again today. Today, Gary may have said something that you just want to follow up on. Maybe you want to follow God and following and obeying him for the first time. Maybe you want to really start a relationship with God. Maybe you want to follow up with God in terms of baptism or in terms of giving. If you want to follow God, um, you can respond right now in a couple of different ways. First, you can text IHD or I have decided to 904-441-8650. Today, we have the opportunity to worship through giving and sacrifice by being a part of supporting our ministries here at Southside Baptist Church. If you would like to be a part of that, text 904-441-8650 and use the word give, and a link there will help you just to, uh, to know how to give to our church today. We would love to worship together in person, and our next worship service in person is next Sunday at 1030 a.m. If you can make that in person, we'd love to see you there, but if you can just join online, we will launch it live the stream at 10 30 a.m as well and just a reminder we have our uh, gatherings going on our regional gatherings as a way to connect to our groups and that will take place through the entire month of august let us pray together 
and thank you again for joining our stream. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you've done. God, we thank you for the story of these baptisms and just how you moved in these people's lives to draw them closer to you and draw them into obedience. God, I pray for our church that we can be humble and obedient to you and to who you are. God, and to what you're leading us as a church to do. But God, I also pray for the families that are watching this right now, that you can lead those families to be humble and to follow after your call in their lives. So help us just to navigate this ever-changing situation that is COVID and to focus on who you are. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you for checking out Southside Baptist Church located in beautiful San Marco. Hi, I'm Jessica. Let me show you around. We have ample parking available and spaces just for you. Come on, let's go inside. And here's guest services where you're always greeted by a friendly face. <laughs> Except right now, she's on break. <laughs> understand that during COVID-19, safety means different things to different people. So here we have a way to help you communicate that. We also ask that you wear a mask. If you do not have one, we can provide one for you. And if you have small children, we have secure check-in. We have ministry for children. Join our community groups Sunday at 9 a.m., safe and socially distant. Join us for worship in our sanctuary Sundays at 1030, where we can still worship together and remain socially distant. And after church, you can enjoy this beautiful San Marco community. There's shopping, there's restaurants, there's fun for the whole family. <laughs>